They say 13 is the unluckiest number, but it's time to look at those classy buggers on the fringes that can carve up but can also make everyone look better around them. Slice that like button through a gap like the magnificent bastard you are, and with the help of those marvellous mother lovers on Reddit, we're finding the greatest outside centres of all time. <laughs> Now, like an old sandwich that was left in your school bag over the summer, a distracted sports top 10 list is back in your life stinking up the joint. I make top 10 lists because I'm lazy and coming up with new interesting content about rugby makes my asshole pucker at the mere thought of it. So I go back to that dirty old sausage maker and pick over the carcasses of good rugby content to make what we can all agree is some mindless entertainment while I exhibit my vast intellect and wow you all with my ability to count backwards from 10. So, for those new to the channel, I'm making top 10 lists in every position until I've created the ultimate first 15 in the history of the game, with the help of the good folks on Reddit. Now why slash how is Reddit involved? Well, unlike other rugby YouTubers who have superior rugby knowledge and the courage to stand beside their teams of the week and players of the tournament and such, I have the knowledge of some random guy standing in front of you at a sports bar blocking the screen and the courage of an undescended testicle. So. This is how it works. I go to the Rugby Union subreddit and type in who is the greatest outside center of all time. I then tally the votes and upvotes and then I create the list. Now, as per usual, I'm stating this is not my opinion, but it will not stop some of the more primitive simians amongst you from telling me this list and my opinion is shit. I can punch myself so hard in my downstairs operation, I will be unable to breed any further. And you know what? Bloody well go for it. It's great for the algo. The algo loves that stuff. Also, tell me about some obscure player from 1936 or some South African. Couldn't ever play a test because of the apartheid era. It's groovy, baby. Unload it. I'm waiting for it. Now, without further ado, I'm happier than your wife was when you finally located her clitoris to present the top 10 outside centers of all time. Number 10, Frank Bunce, a player more dear to my heart than KFC that I'll deeply regret when I'm hungover. He was not only a great All Black, but he was brilliant for my provincial team, North Harbour, spending much of his career pairing with the silky skills of Walter Little, who also represented both sides too. Frank Bunce looked like a bruiser. He had skills and a great step, and ran incredible lines that made him not only a great feeder to the speed out wide, but an exceptional hole runner. He was Auckland born, but made his international debut for Samoa, and played for them in the 91 World Cup, and went on to be an AB stalwart. My favourite period of Bunce's career was towards the end. He was written off as past his used by date after a subpar Super Rugby season by the rabid New Zealand press, and there was a massive outcry when he was selected to play the All Blacks against the old foe South Africa in 1997. In response, Bunce scored two blinders, and stuck it right up the asses of the Kiwi press. Bunce was the ultimate big game player, and the biggest games in that era were always played against the box, and that's where he was at his best, against those meat eaters. Number 9, Jonathan Davies. Damn, for a centre, the man had more toe than a Roman sandal, and had a don't argue fan that could shut the mouthiest up. This Welsh legend was total quality when he was on. He ran lines more potent than a coke dealer getting high on their own supply. His vision and ability to take on the line was really sublime. Did I mention his fin? Yeah, I did, but me dead, it deserves another mention, because he put people on the ground better than a primary school teacher at mat time. The man had handles of a Fijian playing touch with his mates, and whenever he found himself through a hole, he invariably made the right calls, and served up some tasty meat pies for the speedsters around him. His defence was staunch, and the fox as he's known was pure class when he played at his peak. Number 8. Now, the next player figuratively bent me over, raw, and took my innocence in 2003. By the power of Alf Stewart's fiery temper, I'm talking about Sterling Mortlock. He was brilliant and was one of the most dynamic 13s of all time. His pace was electric, and when he found space, he often had the ability to score himself. A true competitor and a massive thorn in the side to any opposition, and of course, he was a great exponent of the intercept. Now I will now reenact myself watching that moment from the 2003 semi-final Rugby World Cup. Big game here. Oh, well, we're on the line. This is 10 stuff. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's a beautiful ball. No, get him. Rocks, you can get him. You can get him. Come on. Oh, no. 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 Fuck. 
against the All Blacks he was freakish and reminded me of an aggressive reoccurring hemorrhoid that develops into a boil. His hairline may have receded over the years but his skills and experience only culminated in making him one of the best players on the planet. The balding shit even kicked goals. I may have nightmares about him but Sterling Mortlock definitely belongs on this list. Number 7. Brian O'Driscoll's best mate and former All Black captain Tana Umanga. He may look like he's been smacked in the face by a shovel, but somehow he makes it work. Starting his career on the left wing, Tana was identified as a bit special early in his career, with serious pace, incredible power and a great step. A proud hurricane that set the early days of Super Rugby on fire. He was a hell of a man to grab and bring down, and at times had the ability to make defenders look like they had no business being on the same field as Tana. While he was a star of the wing, he really became a legend at 13. He had brilliant vision and was an immense passer, could always draw defenders and then could also just break tackles at will. He became a truly outstanding captain of the All Blacks, which included an absolute hammering of the overhyped Clive Woodward coached Lions squad in 2005. Now, he also committed an absolute piece of blatant thuggery in the first couple of minutes of that series, and unfortunately that one act will always come up when people talk about this wonderful but dreaded center. Number six, the man who in many people's eyes is the best player in the world right now. He's the flavor of the month. It's Luke Kanyo Arm, ladies and gentlemen. And for good reason. He's a powerful ball runner, an excellent fierce defender, and he has the handling skills that simply just turn me into a slack-jawed idiot while I'm watching it on the couch as I wonder, how the f did he just do that? In the tackle, he's harder to put down than a loyal pet dog you've had for 17 years. He can kick, his pace is just super quick, and as if his skill set has just taken the piss, the guy has the absolute gall to be great at the f***ing breakdown, and will often win turnovers for his team. His awareness of where his teammates are is truly freakish. This guy looks like a generational talent, who I think when it's all said and done, could give the eventual number one on this list a run for their money. The thing I really love about him, despite him being able to do what other world class talents could only dream of, he's not a glory hog. He always does what is best for the team in any moment, which is really remarkable. In short, he's really good. He's really good. Number five, another South African, well I don't think he's as good, but he's number five, Jacques Ferry. A man who ran a bit like a farmer, but had the knack of being in the right place at the right time. He was a real colossus at the centres, who would impose his physicality almost violently against his opponents. Sometimes when he tackled players, it felt like he was personally offended that they had the audacity to run near him, and he aimed to inflict so much damage that they would not only think twice before running near him, but they would have nightmares about him in their sleep that night. His running lines was just top level, and at times left defenders just grasping at air, and showed the 97 lines when he scored that try to clinch the game. His power to bump off players and stay alive in the tackle was otherworldly, and a little bit outrageous. But I don't think he's as good as Lo Kanyo Arm, but he's apparently got more votes. Number four, Mr. Gerberino, Mr. Gerb Gerberino. Of course I'm talking about Yanni Gerber. Who else would it be? Now, I've got to be honest, I wasn't overly familiar with this bloke before researching this piece, as almost all of his top flight career took place under South Africa's apartheid exclusion. But by the power of a two years emotional breakdown at the supermarket, because they've seen a dead fish that now won't get to play with the other fishies, he has one hell of a highlight reel. His pace is right up there. This man really has those jet shoes. He has a step so tasty, it looks like Christian Cullen was mimicking his style. He could overpower defenders as well as just seem to float and hover through defensive lines, making the impossible almost appear easy. He was really a nightmare to defend. He could skin you for speed on the outside, step you making you look like a muppet, or if he really wanted to, he could just run over you. Effectively, defenders were just f***ed anyway you look at it. Oh dear Richie, I wish this bloke played in any other era so the world could fully appreciate just how good he was. He really looks like a pure class rugby player. I'm just pissed we never really got to see him play. But hey, he's made this list, so I'm sure, I'm sure he'd be thrilled. Number three, the best thing to come out of France since Menage a Toise, it's got to be Philippe Salah. A perfect combination of pace, footwork, and raw class. Starting his career on the wing, he was another one who could make you look foolish on the outside and stop on a dime and penetrate you like it was your first night in a jail cell. With that impressive nose, he may look like Barbara Streisand's long-lost brother, but in rugby, his star shone just as brightly. 
he accrued a whopping 111 test caps for France between 1982 and 1995, which was at the time a record. His running style exudes class as he would glide past defenders like they were stuck in the mud. His step was slick and he had an exceptional rugby IQ as he always positioned himself where you wanted him and he seemed to be able to react to things before they happened. He was a big game player and had a knack for scoring crucial tries in big games. Number 2 he may look like he belongs in a shitty Beatles tribute band, but Conrad Smith is not only one of the best All Blacks of all time, he's one of the best players to have ever walked this hunk of rock we call the earth. His rugby IQ was at genius level, and he did everything, everything bloody well. Deceptively strong in the tackle, great at getting an offload away to unleash whatever speed the All Blacks had on the wing over his career. His ability to take on the line and dissect gaps that other players wouldn't even see was exceptional. His passing game and ability to find players in space was freaky at times. He always had so many options available to him. It made defenders very tentative in how they would nullify all his threats. He was a strong defender and would really let his teammates down. He picked up a ton of meat pies purely from running great support lines and made the most of the great talent that was around him throughout his career. Conrad was insanely competitive, he had an unquenchable thirst for winning and as such every aspect of the game he was involved in he did with full energy and effort. Number 1. You knew it was coming and if it wasn't I would have got death threats from Ireland but it's of course it's got to be the one the only Brian O'Driscoll. It's hard when watching geniuses in sport because one of the key things they do is they make the phenomenal look easy. O'Driscoll made test footy look like a walk in the park at times. He had prodigious pace off the mark and footwork like Fred Astaire. He was one of those players that when he had the ball in his hands you held your breath because you knew there was a very good chance that he could do something that would just take it away. The way he could get through defensive lines without anyone getting close to making a tackle on him was astonishing. That paired with his fan and a great swerve when out in the open made him something out of the ordinary. He played a mind-boggling 141 test matches for Ireland and 83 as captain. He has a special skill set on him that not only allowed him to be world class in every fundamental part of the game, but his vision and creativity on the pitch was something we've never really seen before. His vision for where the space was on the pitch is unmatched, and for my money, he's not only the greatest 13 the world has ever seen, but the greatest player that Ireland has ever produced. So, there we have it. Congratulations, Brian O'Driscoll. You've made the team. You are the outside centre for the greatest first 15 of all time. I'm sure this means a lot to you. Congrats. Once again, a massive thank you to the folks on Reddit for helping me make the list. You lot are brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you, you for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this silly video, please like and subscribe. If you disagree with anything on the list, tell me about it below. Fill your boots. Go for it. Follow me on Twitter at Tones88. But most of all, be good to each other out there, brothers and sisters. Hadi da. I got my hands mixed up.